Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's meeting of the Committee of Adjustments. This is a meeting to consider applications for minor variances and consents held under the authority of the Planning Act of Ontario. Please keep in mind the intent of this process is to review the proposal that is before us, listen to the evidence, and then make a decision. This process is not intended to be used to resolve any concerns or disputes that may exist between the town, individuals, or organizations. If a request for a deferral is made and the committee grants such a request, the committee, after consultation with the secretary treasurer, will set a new hearing date. No further notice will be provided unless there are changes to the application. In order to conduct an effective and efficient hearing, we have adopted the following process. The owner or authorized agent will be given the opportunity, if so desired, to briefly explain to us the basis of the application and answer any questions that may arise out of the hearing. A maximum of five minutes will be provided for this presentation. You need to state your full name and address for the record. Any material submitted to the committee for viewing will remain the property of this committee. Any submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of the committee. All persons attending the hearing who wish to support or oppose the application must also state their name and address for the record. A five minute maximum will be provided to make your presentation. All remarks and questions are to be directed to the chairperson and to the committee. Any submissions beyond these five minutes will also be at the discretion of the committee. If there are several speakers sharing the same view, please select a, a spokesperson to present the group's opinion. We do want to hear everyone's views. However, covering the same points will not advance your case. The owner or agent will then be provided with further five minutes to respond to the comments made by any interested parties and answer any questions from the committee members. If the owner or agent has any concerns found in staff reports, particularly with any proposed conditions, they will be given the opportunity to advise us. The matter will then be taken into committee for a decision and this will mark the end of all discussions. Once the committee makes an oral decision, any person desiring a copy must file the with the secretary treasurer at the meeting a written request for notice of the decision. A green sheet is provided for this purpose at the end, um, at the back of the um, room. Thank you. Uh, please note that you must make a written request in order to be included on the list that is used by the Ontario Municipal Board for the giving of any subsequent notice of any appeal. Written notice of the committee's decision will be mailed no later than 10 days for minor variances and 15 days for consents to the application, to the applicant, the owner, an agent, or any other person who has filed a written request for such notice. If you do not agree with the committee's decision, you may appeal this to the Ontario Municipal Board. The last day to appeal the decision to the Ontario Municipal Board will be noted on the decision. If no appeal is received within the prescribed time frame, the decision of the committee becomes final and binding. The Secretary Treasurer will then notify the applicant through written correspondence. People attending this meeting are to be courteous to and respectful of the members of the committee, town staff, and other people in attendance tonight. Tonight's meeting will be live streamed and available for further viewing on the town's live stream page. We ask that cellular phones and pagers be switched off or at least turned on silent uh, during the meeting as they do tend to interfere with our audio system. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have uh, one regret this, this evening. Mr. Paul Cronus is not uh, able to join us. Uh, are there any declaration of uh, pecuniary interests at this time? I see none. Thank you. Um, at this time, we're going to take requests for deferral or withdrawals. Um, are there any applicants who wish to submit a deferral or request a withdrawal of the application? I see none. Okay. We will proceed then with our first um, application of the evening, which is CAVA 126 at uh, 284 Douglas Avenue. Good evening. Good evening. Your name and uh, address for the record, please. Yeah, my name is Anne McGrath. I'm the owner applicant. I reside at 284 Douglas Ave in Oakville. This is my husband, Paul Dermody, who's with me. Thank you. I don't know if you've got this set up. You may have the plan, the site plan in front of you. There. Yes, thank you. Um, our procedural bylaws allows for us to forego applications if there are no uh, further um, comments or questions um, pertaining to your application. Um, we've all done uh, 
committee members, you've all done your site visits, and uh, if you have anything, we've read the report presented to us by town staff, you're more than welcome to add anything that you'd like to add at this time. Um, the only thing I have to add, I have uh, signed consents from the neighbors on either side of us and the four neighbors across the street from us. Right. Who are, we've Beautiful consulted all of them things. about these plans yes. and they've all signed a consent. I don't know, yes. should I hand them up to you? Okay, yes, please, if you'd be. Did, did you already submit them? Um, three of them were submitted with the yes. original, initial application, but then we amended the plan slightly based on some feedback from uh, Ms. Mihailovic, so these are re-signed consents okay. with the uh, current plans. Hold on, hold on, we, uh, okay, I skipped uh, uh, one, one uh, key portion. Are there any uh, members in the audience here that are here for application CAV 126 at 284 Douglas Avenue? I just need to survey the room to see uh, if there are any interested parties here for this application. Okay, I see none. I apologize for that interruption. Um, okay. We have no uh, amended uh, drawings. I, can you clarify that statement that you've amended the drawings? No, there were no amended drawings. I think we had a, a meeting with Ms. We, we talked to Ms. Mihailovic before we submitted the final application. I, I suppose that's what I'm referring to. Oh, okay. And the ones you have on file were not... The, the plans were varied slightly from what you have on file. So these are the re-signed consents as per the current plans. Okay, so basically your application is still the same. You yes. just had seen people prior to you submitting the application and yes. now you've revisited the, those parties afterwards. Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, me, um, committee members, can we... Um, There's three that are similar, but yeah. I'll just pass them to you. Um, at this time, uh, committee members, do you have any um, questions of uh, Ms. McGrath? I see none. Are you uh, satisfied to m move along, move the motion? Is there anything that you'd like to add further to this uh, application? No, thank you. Okay, thank you. I'll give them a moment to, over, to look over the letters and I will take this into committee. Thank you. Staff uh, has recommended uh, 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 a condition that the proposed one be constructed in general accordance with the plans dated July 13, 2017 as submitted. Um, members, I'm in your hands. Uh, is anyone ready to move a motion for this application? Madam Chair, I'll put forward a motion. Having, um, <clears throat> having visited the site, reviewed the documentation, uh, noted that there's uh, no one here from the public uh, that is uh, objecting to it and taking into account that these, uh, these letters of support, I'd also just like to note for the record that the original letters of support had a slightly reduced lot coverage, and I'm not sure that's what you're referring to, whereas the new letters of support increased the lot coverage to 27.17, which is in accordance with the application. Um, having said all that, I'm going to put forward a motion to approve this particular application, finding it meets the four tests under the Planning Act, making it subject to the condition that the approval will expire in two years from the date of this decision that the proposed development does not proceed or a building permit is not issued, and further subject to the condition that the proposed dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the plans dated July 13, 2017 as submitted. Thank you, Mr. Charlevoix. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. Okay, all those in support? Okay, thank you. Your application has been approved. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I'll be calling application CAV 141 at 299 Church Street. Good evening. Good evening, Madam Chair. For the evening, record, sir. my name is David Capper with Glenn Schnarr & Associates. Our mailing address is uh, 10 Kingsbridge Garden Circle, Unit 700, Post Massago, Ontario, Postal Code L5R3K6. 
Very well. Thank you, Mr. Kaffer. Um, town staff, uh, again, is in support of this application. Um, uh, who is here in support or otherwise uh, interested uh, in application CAV 141 at 299 Church Street? Thank you. Are you here in support or in opposition or you're looking for more information? We have some concerns. You do have some concerns. Okay, Mr. Kapper, please proceed with your uh, presentation and then we'll invite the members and the public to uh, voice their concerns. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, members of the committee, the application before you this evening seeks three variances. Um, you will recall that this, this property was before you in uh, April of 2015 for a similar set of variances. Um, there were actually two sets of variances, one to the old zoning bylaw, uh, one set to the old zoning bylaw and one set to the new zoning bylaw. For the most part, the variances are the same or seeking less of a relief than what was previously approved, um, or parts of the zoning bylaw have been amended so that the variances are no longer required. With respect to the variances that are before you this evening, uh, there is a variance that seeks a reduction in the per unit parking space requirement, whereas the zoning bylaw requires 1.25 spaces per unit for a total of five spaces. This is a, it's a four unit development. Um, we're seeking a reduction of one parking space or a ratio of one per unit for a total of four. Uh, in addition to that, we're seeking to permit a minimum aisle width of 4.1 meters, whereas the zoning bylaw uh, requires a, an aisle width of 6 meters. Um, this is the aisle width uh, over here, and this is the portion of the, um, the underground parking where we're seeking a, a variance for a reduced aisle width. There is a control mechanism at the top of the ramp for the underground parking area which is a, essentially a, a, a signal which identifies a car either um, exiting the site um, or, or the door uh, coming up so that it identifies to anyone wishing to enter the site that there is a car exiting. The idea is that uh, the system would work to, to, to act as a one-way uh, uh, system. And then with respect to the third variance, there's a, a request to permit a minimum height for the first story of three meters, uh, whereas the zoning bylaw requires uh, a minimum of 4.5 meters. And if uh, you'll allow me very quickly to flip to the elevation. Sorry for the interruption, Mr. Kapper. Um, if IT can just uh, refocus the uh, projector, please. Okay, thank you. As is mentioned in the staff comments, 50% of the front of the building is designed so that it complies with the 4.5 meter uh, minimum height. Uh, however, uh, given the fact that this is a, an underground parking, uh, underground parking situation, uh, the first floor, the, the underside of the first floor is in this location here. Uh, and that only occurs at the back of the lobby area. So um, under the zoning bylaw, under the zoning interpretation, uh, it's this part of the of the of the building that does not comply with the four and a half meter uh, minimum height. Uh, and in fact, when you stand at the front of the building, you don't appreciate that that three meter height is in the rear of the building. Uh, the other remaining side of the uh, the building, uh, although it's four point meter four point five meters to the cornice, uh, it does have the uh, entrance to the underground parking. We have prepared, uh, a consultant has prepared a traffic opinion letter that has been presented to engineering staff here at the town. Uh, what the opinion letter provides is uh, mapping of the turning radii for each of the parking spaces, uh, which illustrates that a car can safely enter and exit the, the, the underground parking area without um, having any interaction with the walls of the building. Um, there's also uh, some description about the technologies that are proposed to be used for the, um, for the uh, entrance and exit signage. Through you, Madam Chair, that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Kapper. Are there any questions of Mr. Kapper at this time? Mr. Charlebois? Yeah, I've just got one. Um, actually, not so much there. <clears throat> 
I'm not sure how much I should smile at the traffic report here because I do notice that they're comparing 299 Church Street to the Bay Adelaide Center, uh, Commerce Court, the Princess of Wales Theater. I guess we couldn't find anything in Oakville. Um, but the, the question I wanted to ask really, I guess, was directed at staff because as part of your comments here, it's, it says here that it's noted that the configuration of signage mitigating measures for the driveway of the subject site is recommended the by the transportation impact study will be a condition of the site plan. And I just wanted to know if you felt that was covered in the condition that you gave here, that final approved site plan to the satisfaction of the director of planning, that that encompasses that. Yes, through you, Madam Chair, to the committee. Um, planning staff believe that the, the, new, the particular details surrounding the signage, uh, which is actually governed under the sign bylaw, mm -hmm. would be managed uh, through the revaluation of the, the site plan application. It is still the uh, applicant's responsibility to ensure that that signage does comply. Um, he's been made aware of that, so perhaps he can provide some comments on, on his research on that fact. Uh, but the, the arrangement of these parking type details will be part of the site plan process that will be further evaluated. Okay, that was it. I just wanted to know that it was, was being covered under that. Okay, thank you, Mr. Uh, Kaffer. Um, we'll invite the members in the audience to um, come up and voice their concerns. Hi, Madam Chair. I'm Carl Zimmerman. I'm a businessman here in town, and I'm the landlord of 305 Church Street. Um, this is David Dick. 305 My, uh, Church Street, you said? Yeah, the neighbor, 2299. I've been the landlord for about 10 years or so. Been a prosperous 10 years. Um, this is David Carl Dick. Zimmerman. Carl with a K, Zimmerman, businessman in town. Um, so I have a number of concerns, uh, and I've not had a chance to discuss with my neighbor uh, the proposal. I'm, I'm sorry, I just haven't had a chance. They've not called me or reached out to me, et cetera. And I just received a notice a few days ago. Now, it may be an oversight on my part. I've not, I've not uh, seen anything. It's not come to my attention. Um, so I would just like to ask to defer this matter for until the next meeting give me a chance to discuss uh, with the gentleman, uh, the owner and his team, uh, my concerns. Um, my concerns revolve around safety. There'll, there'll be about 30 people in the building, uh, 20 to 30 people, um, and safety is always important. Um, <clears throat> also, um, streetscape is a concern, and just how it affects my property in an adverse way. You know, with great uh, respect, for what has been accomplished uh, so far. I just have some concerns. No one's called me, no one's reached out to me, no one has. When they built behind me, it was a fairly big uh, project, and I reached out to them immediately, they reached out to me, we had conversations. We don't always agree, you know, you don't always agree, but we've compromised, and it was a, it was a fair arrangement at the end of the day, so okay. I'm just a little bit in the dark here, that's all. And uh, that's fair enough, thank you for voicing those concerns. I did ask in the beginning of the meeting if there was anyone who would like to request a deferral withdrawal of an application. Why did you not raise your concerns at that time? Because that was the platform at that time to do so. Okay, so we were in the impression that a deferral was... But strictly the, uh, the, uh, the purview of the appellant or the applicant. Okay, uh, no, no, usually you can at that time say I haven't had a chance or, you know, we could have dealt with it at that time. Having said that, um, perhaps you can now uh, ask your questions in as much detail as possible and then we can get you the information that you're looking for. Um, since we do have the applicant's representative here and he is willing to answer all the questions as, as needed. Um, and then we as a committee can decide whether we're satisfied and we would like to move ahead with making a decision or we will entertain the idea of a deferral. Again, there are deferral fees that come along with the prospect of deferral, so the applicant has to be willing to actually do that. Um, so I urge you to ask your questions in as much detail as possible and it's your time now since yes. we are here. Uh, we will take as much time as we need to uh, get you the answers that are necessary. Okay, so my, uh, uh, my team is not here. My, my legal representative, my planning uh, consultant is not here. Um, again, this, I, re I just received this, this document a few days ago. Uh, I was out of town and, and, and it kind of coming along me fast here, so I apologize. Um, but I've not had, my professional team is not here with me, unfortunately. Um, but the area of safety is important. The area of streetscape, 
the, look, the appearance, the visual from the street is important, and how it will impact my property is important as well. Uh, probably in, in, the, in that order of, of importance. And I've not had a chance, again, to my professionals are the people that, that deal with this and would know how to submit properly and so on and so forth. Um, Finn, so sorry. David can say a few things. David Dick. Sure. Uh, I'll, I'll respond to your, your concerns first. Uh, f that, that's, those are fair enough uh, concerns. You did hear that the applicant is subject to site plan uh, approval. So within site plan, everything from t tree hoarding to enclosures, the whole uh, nine yards goes into that. So putting that aside, I'll, I'll hear the comments of your uh, colleague, and then we'll get Mr. Capper to respond uh, to your concerns you. as much detail as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is David Dick. I'm a consulting engineer in Oakville. Uh, Madam Chair, members of committee. Um, Crozier. Sorry, can I have your address as well, please? Yes, for the uh, 1244 Grange Road, Oakville. Uh, Crozier Associates has demonstrated in plan uh, the function of the parking spaces below, and I have no issue with their demonstration. I do have some questions specifically about the ramp and the operation of the ramp. Uh, we're dealing with a one-way lane that changes direction with people coming up and going down subject to a signal light. Uh, the front elevation demonstrates uh, a nine-foot uh, you know, garage door space uh, on, on the apparent elevation. And I wanted to draw this to the attention of the committee members. On the section that was provided as part of the drawings, uh, we see uh, you know, a seven foot six and then subsequently seven foot four as a clearance dimension with no garage door allowance of, of any kind with the ramp coming up. And our concern on safety is that as the vehicles approach the sidewalk, they're going to get a clear view of the third floor of the parkade across the street, uh, which isn't quite as handy for dealing with safety issues and, uh, and directional views uh, because of how the approach works, uh, notwithstanding that you know, there's street stoppage uh, coming and going for this function and for the laneway to change directions. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any other uh, points? I've noted some of them down. Uh, well, again, my, my, uh, my professional, uh, my lawyer and they would be able to verbalize those in a, in a better manner than I can. Um, but they are, they are concerns of ours, and I think they're serious. Um, and I'm prepared to pay the fee. I mean, I'm not worried about paying a fee to defer this for a few weeks. Okay, um, thank you for that uh, statement. Are there any questions of Mr. Uh, David or Mr. Carl? Uh, gentlemen, if I could just, <clears throat> a lot of this stuff, that, as the, the, the chair uh, men, men, ooh, I'll try that again, the chairman mentioned, um, uh, are related to site plan. And we're specifically looking at three variances here. And uh, I'm just wondering if, if you wouldn't mind, uh, do you have a, uh, a, say, a problem with reducing the parking from 1.25 spots to one spot per dwelling or the, anything to do with the, uh, the aisle width? Um, and I guess your, David, your, your comments are probably directed maybe a little bit at this minimum first story height, but I'm not yes, really sure. Yes, uh, to speak honestly, I have no issue with the reduction of the number of parked cars nor the adjustment of the parking space, but I would draw to the committee's attention that it's a bit like boiling the frog by degrees. You really are dealing with an approval for a one-way lane scenario with an additional light on Church Street, and that's a given that's inherent in the approval of those changes. Uh, so I, I simply raised the issue for right. uh, your wisdom and consideration. Well, and that was why I asked the question of staff, because it was noted in the staff report that, that they were making reference to um, operations that we see at, you know, the Bay Adelaide Center, the Commerce Center downtown. I mean, these are far different types of buildings. So obviously there's not a lot of examples of this particular thing, and, and it wasn't described to us either. Mm. So I just wanted to know that um, if we were to give our approval here, was this still subject to the town and the town staff looking at it much closer? Because like you, I've gotten really nothing about how this is gonna work except that they've identified as a potential problem. Yeah, I certainly appreciate that sentiment because uh, the operation of it is really the issue. Uh, the fact that the cars will fit clearly has been demonstrated uh, subject to that they're probably looking for shorter cars. They won't, uh, they won't be very big cars, I'll tell you that much right now. <laughs> I kind of thought the same, thank you. Um, all right, so just to be clear, the number of parking spots, no, 
the parking aisle with no the entrance and exit questions. That's a concern. Okay. And a few others that we'll just, uh, we just need a bit of time to prepare ourselves, that's all. Yeah, the other yeah. items on our list, I believe, can be held into the site plan process. Yeah, it's, it, I was just trying to point out that as a, as a committee member, we're only here to, to really okay. talk about Sorry. these other three. We couldn't even make any comments on some of Sorry. those other points anyway. Yeah, we, we did examine what we could find on the website, and it doesn't appear that a site plan application is in full force or in review at this time. So I'm supposing that the full site plan application hasn't yet been made. We'll get that information for you. Um, is there any other questions of uh, Mr. Carl and Mr. David at this time? I see none. We'll invite you to sit down, and Thank Mr. Capper will um, have his time to respond to your concerns, and then. Thank you, Madam Chairman and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else who's here uh, for this application? Have I heard everyone who was interested in this application? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, for the benefit of the committee members, I'd just like to go through uh, the points raised um, and perhaps clear up um, some misconceptions. Um, as background, this development proposes four two-bedroom units. These are very large, high-end, luxury condominium uh, residential units. Uh, the reference to 30 people, I'm not sure what that's in reference to. Um, certainly. Um, this is probably a project that is geared towards empty nesters with an occasional visitor on a weekend perhaps, um, but certainly nowhere near 30 people um, in the property. Um, with respect to the, the comments of not providing um, an opportunity to discuss the application, uh, that's true. Unfortunately, we haven't had an opportunity to reach out to our neighbors and, uh, and have a discussion with them. We have been in extensive conversations with staff um, going back over a year now uh, to the point where we actually had submitted a site plan application. Um, that application was actually deemed incomplete and the basis for it being deemed incomplete was that this, the, uh, the 60 day window had expired by 15 days. So we were actually made to go back to do a second pre-consultation meeting and in the second pre-consultation meeting we were directed to submit the minor variance application first, which is where we are this evening. Uh, the direction from staff was, we'll deal with the land use approvals first, and then we'll come back and deal with the design once we've worked out all the issues with respect to the access. Um, with respect to the site plan, um, I do have a copy of the site plan that is approved. Um, the reference of the, um, of the, uh, the neighbor with respect to the, pre the, um, the approved site plan um, there is a site plan approval. It's almost identical. In terms of building footprint and building height, I'm sorry, that doesn't show up very well. The main difference between the two proposals, that being the approved site plan, um, for which variances were approved in, in 2015, um, I note there were no objections from any of the neighbors at that point in time. I believe it was this committee that, uh, that ruled on that uh, application. The applications were almost identifi identical, seven except for two facts. One, we propose an additional unit. It's still a four-story building. It was still built to more or less the lot lines except for this, uh, the uh, westerly facade. Um, and in the current proposal, there's underground parking. So. Um, where there used to be parking at grade, it's now proposed to be underground. Um, this is the unique, the, the previous approval had a unique configuration with respect to uh, parking. It had a turntable, um, and the turntable provided uh, a, a access to a lift, which had uh, two parking spaces per lift for a total of six parking spaces. Um, you're nodding, I think you recall the application. Um, so with respect to um, uh, the development of the site, this is a tight site. It's very narrow. There are buildings on either side of it, and it is in a downtown central business district designation and zone. Um, the opportunity to achieve a six meter drive aisle and accommodate parking is limited to uh, either doing, well, first of all, you cannot accommodate a six meter aisle and parking unless you're driving straight into the, the, the property. That's a design consideration that we've, uh, that we've had to make. 
So the only way we can get parking side by side along the, 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 the depth of the property is to achieve a, a reduced aisle width. We've pushed that aisle as far as we can in terms of a maximum width, and unfortunately, given the constraints of the site, that maximum is 4.1 meters. So with respect to the safety of the ramp, um, we have examined it to the extent that we need to for the Committee of Adjustment. Um, the next step in this process is a site plan approval. Um, we've, we've gone above and beyond what the normal requirements would be for a Committee of Adjustment application, and we've more or less designed the underground parking area um, more or less to the point that we would be for a site plan application. So yes, it is true that there will be a slope uh, and a car exiting the, uh, the, the building will uh, incur a slope. Um, that slope does level out and then there's a slope down into the, uh, the right of way. Um, so again, those are issues that will be f um, fine tuned during the site plan process. Uh, for the most part, we've dealt uh, with them as best as possible up until now. Um, and our engineers are, are confident that moving forward, um, they'll be able to resolve any other issues that, that, that would result. Having said that, um, I don't think there was anything else that was addressed uh, with respect to the comments. I'm happy to answer any questions the committee might have. Are there any questions of Mr. Capper at this time? Okay, I see none. Okay, I will now take this uh, matter into uh, committee. Um, I'm going to say yes. Yes, I'm going to talk about this. Um, um, we've heard what you, your concerns, and uh, hopefully Mr. Capper has, um, has um, answered uh, somewhat uh, all of them. While I appreciate your offer to, um, f you know, put forth the, f the, the, the fee for the deferral, um, in the interest of having time to prepare uh, for your concerns and voice them before the committee, um, I'm confident that um, your concerns are mainly going to be addressed through the site plan process. Uh, whatever decision we make here um, will not in any way impede your uh, ability to voice those concerns and have them addressed uh, through your participation in the site plan committee uh, meetings. Um, however, in the interest of uh, clarity and full disclosure, I, I will put the deferral matter before the committee and, and ask them what their opinions is, and this will be an open forum uh, discussion. Members, I'm in your hands. Uh, I know Mr. Capper, uh, it, it has to, he has to agree to that, but um, that's my opinion about discussing uh, the matter of uh, deferral. Are there any discussion as to the points that I've made? Mr. Capper, can I just clarify, are, <clears throat> is your client in, in support of a deferral or would you rather that this be heard in front of the committee tonight? Through you, Madam Chair, although I, I respect the, the neighbor's request for deferral, um, we've unfortunately been at this quite some time. Um, I have a client who acquired this property um, almost three years ago with the intent of developing it pretty soon. Um, we've, we've, our firm has been at this for, for over a year. Um, we've, we've unfortunately hit hurdle after hurdle, um, and tonight was, uh, was a step in the right direction. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to, to defer the application. Um, should the committee wish to impose that, we'd ask that they, uh, that they not, um, and that we move forward with the recommendation on the application. All right, thank you. And sorry if I, if I might add, um, I do think that all of the concerns can be adequately addressed through the site plan process. I think that the, the neighbor would be very happy at the end of the day with the design that's proposed. Um, this is a high-end development. It's not, uh, it's not going to be, um, it's not going to detract from the character of the neighborhood for sure. And I do believe we'll be able to resolve any concerns at that point in time. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Capper. So um, I'm glad that Mr. Capper reiterated my point of view about uh, the situation with requesting a deferral. Um, I'm now in the committee's hands um, to move a motion for this application. Um, 
Madam Chair, I, I'm believing I think that the the subject that's on here is <clears throat> is with this committee support a deferral. I'm going to, given all the evidence that's presented here today, and there's no sense going going over it. I'm going to uh, put forth a, a motion that uh, the request for deferral be denied. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Charlebois. Um, in the event that we move forward with this application as uh, suggested, um, is there a motion for this application at this time? Who's ready to move? Oh, I apologize. Okay, so all those in um, support of Mr. Charlebois's um, motion to deny a request for deferral? Okay. So motion to defer has been uh, rejected. Now we'll proceed with a motion uh, for this application and deciding on the variances that are set before us. Madam Chair, uh, I'm gonna move a motion that this application before us uh, be approved as applied for, uh, finding that it meets the four tests of the Planning Act. I would uh, make that approval subject to final or the development proceeding in accordance with the final site plan drawings to satisfaction of the director of planning and that a building permit issue within two years uh, i'd like to speak to the motion um, and in particular the fact that there the neighbor was out in opposition um, i did support proceeding tonight because while um, it's disappointing when applicants don't speak to their neighbors and they risk either a denial or potential appeal as a result of that. Um, that is not an absolute requirement and not a reason to defer the application, um, nor is the uh, neighbor not having people available to speak to the issue a reason to deny the application or defer the application. Um, I, I will note a number of concerns that were raised by the neighbor. Um, safety, streetscape, how it impacts his building, garage door height. Uh, Madam Chair, out of those issues, I think the matter of safety is probably the only one that actually relates to the variances that are in front of the committee. And as my colleague, Mr. Charlois said, uh, we are charged with dealing with the variances that are in front of us. Uh, with respect to safety, I'll just raise two points. Um, the, the applicant did uh, provide a traffic impact study that addressed the issue. It was done to the satisfaction of town staff. And while, yes, this is not a typical situation with a one-way situation, uh, I do believe that it is a new reality of intensification that we have to deal with that uh, typical you know standard uh, or typical standards that we've been dealing with are not going to apply in situations and there need to be alternatives found which I think they've done here so again madam chair I'll, to reiterate uh, move approval of the application subject to the two conditions Thank you, Mr. Talowski. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay, Mr. Capper, your application has been approved, and uh, gentlemen, um, you'll have uh, your voices heard in the site plan um, application as you've heard. Okay, moving on to application CAV. 142 at 458 Jeanette Drive. Good evening. evening. Uh, my name is uh, Zbigniew Lisowski, uh, 458 uh, Jeanette Drive, uh, Oakville, Ontario. Thank you, Mr. Lisowski. Uh, is there anyone here who's present for application CAV 142 at 458 Jeanette Drive? I see none. 
Okay, um, Mr. Lazowski, as I've mentioned before, um, our procedural bylaws allows us to forego a presentation. The, um, we've done our site visits, we've read the staff report. Uh, staff is in, um, in, um, in support of your application. At this time, do you have anything else that you'd like to add with respect to your application uh, and address the committee members as you see? Um, uh, actually, I'm not sure if I uh, can add it, uh, uh, the permit uh, uh, for the driveway already. I have it. Uh, so I'm not sure if you have it already or not. Um, the permit for the driveway. No, we, we, we don't have. We have the condition uh, there, so it's, it's fine. Um, then uh, I don't have anything. Yeah. Um, members, are there any questions of Mr. Lazowski at this time? Okay, I see none. Uh, we're ready to um, move a recommendation on your application if you have nothing further to add. Um, I got actually nothing to, to add. Very well, thank you. Uh, members, I'm in your hands. Uh, who would like to move a recommendation uh, for 450 Agenet Drive? Madam Chair. Oh, thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Um, having reviewed the materials and uh, undertaken my site visit, mm -hmm. Um, I'm satisfied that uh, the requested variance conforms to the four tests of the Act. I'll put forward a motion of approval, noting that there are no members of the public present uh, with respect to this matter. Um, and uh, the motion would be subject to two conditions, the first being that the driveway be established in general accordance with the plans dated February 4th, 2017 as submitted, the second being that the approval will expire within two years if a building permit has not been issued. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Your application has been approved. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to application uh, CAV 143 at uh, 307 William Street. Oh, that's you, Mr. Capper. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you for the record. My name is David Capper with Glenn Schnarr and Associates in Kingsbridge Garden Circle, Unit 700, Mississauga, Ontario, L5R3K7. Is there anyone here for application uh, CAV 143 at 307 William Street? I see none. Mr. Capper, uh, do you have anything further to add uh, that you'd like to tell the committee before we take this matter into committee? For you, Madam Chair, um, I don't. I just uh, note two matters uh, of procedural matters for you. Um, the first is that there were two letters of support that were submitted to the, uh, the committee. Um, those are from neighbors on either side of the property. And the second uh, more minor one is I just want to make sure that you have the most recent drawings that were submitted to the committee. I note that the, the drawings that were posted on the town's website were actually the older version. Um, the only difference between the sets of drawings um, was along the west elevation. There are no windows in the addition. So the set you should have, uh, which was submitted as part of our application, should show no windows in the rear portion of the addition um, along the west elevation. Uh, you'll simply see new siding as a descriptor there. Yeah, just to note that they were the, 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 the so older version was but posted to the town. Just on the addition, right? I mean, just on the addition, that's correct. Other than that, I have uh, nothing further to add, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Capper. We have, yes, we do have the revised uh, June 6th uh, 2017, no, and then the Juni July 19th is the one following that. Yeah. Yeah. Still well existing. Members, are there any questions of Mr. Capper at this time? I see none. So we are ready to take the matter into committee if you have nothing further to add. No, I do not. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Mr. Capper. Uh, gentlemen, uh, who would like to move a motion um, with respect to this application? Uh, Madam Chair, um, I'll put forward a motion. Having conducted my site visit and read the staff report, noting that it is favorable, um, do taking into account that there were two letters of support from the public, um, 
I'm going to put forward um, a motion to approve this particular application, finding it does meet the four tests on the Planning Act, making it subject to the condition that this approval will expire two years from the date of the decision if the proposed development does not proceed or a building permit is not issued, and further subject to the condition here that, pr that the proposed addition and detached garage be constructed in general accordance with the plans dated July 19, 2017 as submitted which on those ones I do note that the west elevation shows no windows on the addition. Thank you, Mr. Charlevoix. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay. Your application has been approved. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> CAV um, 144 at 1473 Constance Drive. Thank you, Madam Chair. Again, for the record, my name is David Capper with Glenn Schnarn Associates, 10 Kingsbridge Garden Circle, Unit 700, Mississauga, Ontario, L5R 3K7. Thank you, Mr. Capper. Um, is there anyone here for application CAV 144 at 1473 Constance Drive? I see none. Okay. Um, again, Mr. Capper, uh, the floor is yours. If you have anything to add to this application before the committee uh, chooses to take the application into um, um, committee. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, just very quickly, we've read the staff report. We agree with staff's findings on this application, um, and I'm happy to answer any questions should the committee have them. Thank you. Yes, we know that the staff is in support of this application. Members, do you have any questions of Mr. Capper at this time? I see none. Um, recommendation, Mr. Talowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I move the application be approved as applied for, uh, finding that meets the four tests of the Planning Act. And while the house is larger than the bylaw permits, the design of the house, I believe, uh, appropriately mitigates the impact of that additional size. I make. I also note that there is no opposition to this application. I'd make the approval subject to development proceeding in general accordance with the drawings provided and that a building permit issue within two years. Thank you, Mr. Slavsky. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. Uh, all those in support? Your application has been approved. Thank you, Mr. Kaplan. Are you sure you don't want to stay one, for one more? Well, it's funny you ask. Um, but I do have one more application. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just didn't look ahead far, far enough. Okay, Mr. Capper, take it, Capper, take it away. CAV 145, 510 Trillium Drive. Again, uh, and thank you everyone for their patience. Um, for the uh, record, my name is David Capper with Glenn Schnarn Associates. Uh, our address is 10 Kingsbridge Garden Circle, uh, Unit 700, Mississauga, Ontario. L5R 3K6, and we're here on behalf of uh, Steve Hamlin and Associates um, with respect to this application. Uh, we've read the staff comments, and we again are in support of those. We note that they uh, they note no concerns with respect to the proposed variances, um, and we'd be happy to answer any questions that uh, the committee may have. Thank you, Mr. Kapler. In all fairness, I do have to survey the um, members of the committee, uh, the members of the the uh, public. Um, is there anyone here for CAV 145 at 510 Trillium Drive? I see none. Um, staff is in support of this application. Members, do you have any questions of Mr. Capper at this time? I see none. Um, are we ready for a motion? Mr. Uh, Hardcastle, thank you. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, having reviewed the materials, uh, including the staff report in support of the application undertaking my site visit, I'm satisfied that the requested variance conforms to the four tests of the Act. I'll put forward a motion of approval, um, subject to um, two conditions, the first being that the proposed dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the plans dated July 6, 2017, as submitted, second being that the approval will expire within two years of the date of the decision of a uh, permit has not been issued. Uh, I would note that there were no members of the public present to uh, speak to this matter. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Um, Hardcastle. Is there any discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay. Your application has been approved. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Have a good night. You as well. Okay. Um, we're looking at CAV 146 at 350 Chartwell Road. Thank you. 
Good evening. Good evening. My name is Joris Kieran, Kieran Design, 100 Bronte Road, Unit 10, Oakville. I'm the agent for the applicant. Good evening, Mr. Kieran. Um, is there anyone here for application CAV 146 at 350 Trotville Road? Okay, you are in support or in opposition? That, that is the applicant. That's the applicant yeah. and the, the people behind? Sorry, yourself. I, I saw several hands go up. Yes, sir. You're here? You have a few questions. Okay. Mr. Uh, Kieran, uh, the um, staff are not in support of your application, so we would like a, a repre uh, presentation, and uh, then we'll invite the member in the uh, audience uh, to voice their concerns. Sure. I'll just uh, briefly run through the variances being requested. So there's six variances being requested for this property. It's a um, proposed new two-story dwelling. Uh, replacing the existing uh, dwelling, which uh, is probably about 40 or 50 years old. Uh, variance number one is a increase in garage size um, from uh, 56 square meters permitted to 73. Uh, the reasons for that primarily are for some additional storage, but also to allow for the appropriate vehicular man um, maneuvering for the side loading garage that's being proposed. Uh, variance two, we have a reduction in side yard setback, which is occurring on the northwest side of the property. It is only this portion of the dwelling that's penetrating that side yard lot line, and it's really only uh, being requested so that there's adequate uh, turning uh, room for vehicles uh, on this side of the, of the building. Um, the dwelling would fit um, within the setbacks other otherwise. Variance number three is the uh, dwelling depth. So we have uh, a dwelling depth of uh, um, 24.74 meters. And the dwelling is deeper than 20 meters. However, the majority of the overage is associated with the covered porches at the front and the rear. Uh, but even without those, there would be a slight overage over the 20 meters. But the majority of it is the covered porches. Um, variance number four is the floor area. So um, this is basically a request that stems from the, um, you know, the preference of the, uh, of the, uh, of the owner and their need uh, for additional square footage for their family and also for um, entertaining an extended family that visits periodically. Variance number five is the, um, uh, the lot coverage increase. Uh, it's a pretty small increase to 26.3%. Uh, 25 is allowed, as you know. Uh, that that uh, increase can be associated to or attributed to the increased garage and the, uh, the covered porch at the front and rear. The dwelling itself would not um, cause that overage. Variance number six is the uh, front yard setback reduction. Um, you can see here and in the drawings, the existing building is, is about here. So we're, we're pushing the proposed dwelling slightly forward. And the main reason for that is the irregular shape of the property uh, in the rear. If it, if it wasn't for that, we, we would easily be able to slide the, the house back. So that's one reason why we're doing this. Uh, the second reason is basically just to maximize uh, space in the backyard. Um, we're still providing, in our opinion, uh, a, a pretty reasonable front yard setback. Um, nine meters is the minimum required um, under, uh, under the zoning bylaw on one level. Uh, on, on the second, it's the uh, one meter uh, less existing. But we are well within and well exceeding the, uh, the, the one, the one uh, requirement, uh, nine meters. So we're at that 13.6 uh, meters. So it's a, it's a, good, it's a, good, uh, it's a good size. Uh, front yard. Um, that's the, those are all the six variances and um, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Oh, sorry, there's one. Go ahead. Can I add one more thing? Um, on the first variance, the garage, uh, part of the reason that we did change the orientation to a side loading was to um, not have the garage doors visible to the street. Um, and, and that's uh, another reason why the additional area in the garage, um, you know, is, is, is less, uh, less noticeable. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kieran. Are there any questions of Mr. Kieran at this time? 
Mr. Talowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have several questions. Uh, Mr. Kieran, do you have a drawing that sh you're requesting a reduced front yard? Do you have a drawing that shows this house in relation to the house on either side of it? I didn't see that in our package. Yeah, unfortunately, the um, this site plan does not show the adjacent dwellings. So, no, I can't speak to that. I from from I think perhaps staff might have more information on that, but. Uh, I think we're pretty close to an average. However, we are protruding a little bit more forward. This is a corner lot, by the way, so it's a little bit unique. But I'm sorry, I don't have the exact uh, dimensions on that. Okay. And in the staff report, um, staff has determined a section of chart well that they deem to be the context in which to judge this um, application. Um, a, a very a defined section of chart well. I'm just mm -hmm. wondering whether you agree with that interpretation of staff or whether you have a different view of uh, the context in which the, your application should be looked at? Um, I, I mean, I, I see the point, uh, but I, I would look to chart well in its entirety um, when looking at this design, uh, not just the, uh, the section that they're referring to. Um, that would be my response. There, sorry, there are several examples that are similar to this in style on Chartwell. That's the, the main point I'm trying to make. Mr. Hardcastle, you had uh, questions as well? Um, Mr. Talowski has uh, covered over on my questions here. So um, uh, with, with the exception of uh, um, perhaps I'll just seek a little bit of clarity on the last point. You, you the, the, the sole reason for... Uh, considering a broader context would be that there are similar designed houses elsewhere is that the sole reason for your rationale um, yeah elsewhere on chart well that's what I meant to clarify okay, yeah um, that would probably be the main point um, other than that I just think the house is um, in its own merit uh, a reasonable and appropriate designed for the street. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay. Uh, at this time, I'll invite sure. the uh, gentleman who had some questions. Okay. Name and address for the record. For the record, my name is John Probert. I live at 342 Chartwell, which is the property just to the south of okay. 350. Sorry, what was the last name again? Last name's Probert, P-R-O-B-E-R-T. Okay, Mr. Probert. Um, I am a United States citizen, by the way. I don't know if you need to know that or not. No, it's fine. Uh, what, how can we help you today? What are the questions that you'd have? So we looked at the drawings uh, on the net when, we, when, uh, when this was proposed, and it looks like the uh, driveway is going to be very, very close to our property line. And on the property line is a row of trees. I think that those trees are probably going to have to come down according to the design that we saw. And if that's the case, and I know this gentleman does not live on Chartwell, um, I can say for a fact that living on Chartwell now is just becoming a construction zone. And uh, what he's going to do, I can see, is going to make that street all the more noisier. Um, he obviously hasn't been down Chartwell in some time, but it is nothing but construction material. And I've got two very young kids, and it's, it's becoming almost dangerous to the point where uh, we kind of want to leave. Okay. Um, other than the, the driveway hedge, which is uh, actually discussed in the staff's report, uh, is there anything else that we can get you answers to? Um, I'm a little bit concerned. My wife's concerned about how many people are actually going to live in this house. Those are not uh, really things that we cover in this committee, but uh, we'll let the applicant address this, uh, these concerns. Uh, ha are, are there any questions of Mr. Propert at this time? I see none. Is there anything else? Or I can invite Mr. Kieran to address your questions. Well, the other thing, too, is that uh, when this house is torn down, uh, it's going to be a dusty, 
mess, and if you've ever lived next to a house that's been under construction, it's not a pleasant experience. I do have two young kids. It probably will be a lot of you know dust and debris flying around. Most of it was going to come towards our property. Um, is, is there anything that can be done about that? And the other thing is we have a pool, so I'd like at least some notice when the property is going to come down so we have time to close it. Understood. Um, the, the, the idea or the issues that come with new construction will be uh, mitigated through, I guess, a site plan uh, procedure as well where uh, everything can be um, organized in, in such a fashion. But I will let Mr. Kieran uh, answer your questions and your concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yes, the, the hedge was noted in the staff report, and it's actually shown on the uh, on the proposed site plan. And uh, the hedge is entirely on the, um, my, on the applicant's property. Um, we haven't discussed the um, the landscape treatment for the uh, driveway. Um, the, the neighbor is correct that that hedge would have to be removed. So um, that, that is uh, for sure um, going to happen. Um, my client, um, although I haven't spoken to him in detail about this, um, would be um, replacing that hedge with a fence of some sort and possibly some additional landscape material and, um, and, and would possibly be open to discussing some additional landscaping on the uh, neighbor's property if that um, were to help. I don't want to commit him to anything here, but um, that, is, that would be my, um, my understanding and a fence at the very least, so there would be some privacy reinstated um, for that side. I also just want to note that um, uh, we have amended the design uh, based on staff comments uh, a, f a few months ago where um, uh, the driveway location was uh, changed to uh, and amended to basically be uh, no bigger than the existing driveway is currently, and then this being the, the, the proposed section. There was a previous design that, that called for almost a circular driveway with the garage entering this side. Um, the, the, the applicant actually wished originally to have a circular driveway, but there's lots of town trees here. So this proposal, although it does require the removal of this private hedge, um, it's been specifically designed to be sympathetic to the you know, the town trees and, and the trees that are in this area. So it won't have an impact on those at least. Uh, the construction, uh, you know, noise and dust, um, I think, um, as you were pointing out, is, is basically dealt with through the, the building permit process and, and uh, site alteration permit process. So that can be mitigated that way. Are there any questions of Mr. Kieran at this time? Mr. Uh, Hark, uh, sorry, Mr. Shalabal. Mr. Kieran, you, when you did your presentation, you talked to each one of the variances, and I took notes on those things. But the staff report talks about the sort of culmination of things, and, and unfortunately it doesn't go into a lot of detail on each of the specific things. But I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk to basically the town's focus that it's, it's the addition of so many variances that creates a building that's out of proportion. Right. Um, I, I, I see their point um, on the one hand, but on the other hand, I think that, and this is the reason why I broke it down into these e an explanation on each one of the variances, because we have a couple of unique conditions that create most of these variances. Uh, one is the, the shape of the property uh, with this jog here. And also the, um, the side load and garage, which I think could be viewed as a, a benefit uh, from a streetscape perspective because it really hides the garage well and, and creates a symmetrical front elevation. Um, that pushes the house towards the uh, northwest, so that's the reason for the side yard variance. I think the lot coverage variance is minimal. Um, and, and, you know, there's uh, some additional um, RFA, and, and that is probably the biggest variance out of the list. Um, that and that is basically a result of the client's, you know, requirements, and um, and he's scaled it back significantly already based on my suggestion and 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 uh, what staff provided through some uh, preliminary comments. So so you are looking at an already reduced 
uh, proposal. So there's been compromises made uh, in that regard. Uh, I don't want to explain everything away, um, but that is, um, I think that is a reasonable and, and appropriate explanation for, uh, to answer the, the comments uh, that staff had about the um, cumulative impact of these variances. I think they are, um, you know, looked at individually, I think they're reasonable and therefore cumulatively they are reasonable. Are there any qu other further questions, Mr. Talowski? Here, I've got a question for staff. There's no other questions for Mr. Kerr. Ms. Mihalovich, this would be the supplemental question to the question I asked the applicant uh, with respect to the suggestion of how or what area is uh, the right area to uh, view the context of this application and uh, I'd like to get a little more explanation from you as to how you determine that area because I'm, I'm having a little difficulty with um, that uh, confined context and uh, what I'm finding is I'm struggling with it. this is a very large house with several variances and in the wrong context, uh, I can see how um, this would be something that uh, staff would recommend denial. But in the context of this house, which to a large extent, I'm not sure that uh, when you're passing on the street, it's going to be noticed. And, and I put that in relation to the very large, uh, uh, taste is the eye of the beholder, but I'd say not overly well designed from an urban design point of view and very close to the street and very in your face, the brand new houses at Maple and Chartwell. Uh, and when I drive down the street and I look at those houses, which I find to be very imposing in their context, and then I look at this one in its context and I'm, I'm having difficulty seeing where the impact of this house is in its context on the wider section of the street. And I'm, I'm not sure why staff is sort of confining their view to the area that's been suggested in the report. Uh, through you, Madam Chairman, to the committee members. Um, as you will note, that one of the major tests that we look at when evaluating a minor variance application is the uh, meeting the general intent and purpose of the official plan, which speaks to neighborhood character. It speaks to providing a, a compatible uh, built form that transitions and is sympathetic to what is in the surrounding area. To respond to some earlier questions that you had had with respect to the, the positioning or siting of this proposed dwelling in relation to the abutting properties, staff have conducted that analysis and we will note to you that the house that is to the south, the resident who is here this evening, um, if you can see on the plan that's in front of you, you can see where the original house is an L-shaped. The southern portion of that house is in line with the front face of the garage of the southern house, which is also a similar design L-shape which puts this house as the proposed garage fills in that area and now moves it forward, significantly forward in front of the house to the south. So while it is still generally in line with the house to the north, there is not that sympathetic transition between the house to the north and the house to the south. Further, when we are looking at the cumulative effects of these variances, as Mr. Kieran has explained individually, they may appear minor, they may appear as um, small incremental increases to what the bylaw would allow, but the cumulative effect would result in a dwelling that is overbuilt for this property, and due to the lack of transition and sympathy that it is providing to the abutting properties, it's staff's opinion, that these variances represent an overbuilding of the property and is not in character with that initial context that we are seeing, which is substantially more important for us to consider rather than looking at the entire streetscape of Chartwell. As we've indicated in our comments, Chartwell is a very long street. So while I will agree with Mr. Kieran that this design is found 
throughout the expanse of Chartwell. I think that it is important to consider the location of this particular dwelling on the length of Chartwell, the abutting dwellings that it is again, up against in terms of looking at that sympathetic character and transition that we would be looking to achieve. And that would be the, the basis of the comments that staff have provided and, and why we were uh, not supportive. I will also add that the character of this area is in this vicinity is also highlighted by the vegetation and the property lined vegetation that exists. The proposal for the driveway that will remove these trees, I will indicate to the committee that should you choose to move forward with an approval and require a fence be constructed along that area, the fence can only be so high up into the front of that house because then it becomes the front yard. So there is still a large portion of hedge that would be removed, which does provide privacy to the abutting property where a fence could not be provided at a height that would still achieve the same degree of privacy that that hedge would currently achieve. So I would just like to point that out, that the reason that staff have also not come forward with a suggested condition for a privacy screen is because it, the configuration of this driveway, the configuration of the garage and the overall size of the home just doesn't fit the meeting of privacy and overlook and, and having that massing now being impacted in the front yard of the abutting property to the south. Are there any further questions? I see none. Uh, Mr. Uh, Kieran, if you have nothing further to add, we're ready to take this matter into committee. Um, no, I, I have nothing further to add. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Gentlemen, um, ready to entertain a motion whenever you're ready. Mr. Charlevoix, thank you. Madam Chair, um, having read the staff report and done my site visit, um, as well as listened to the presentation by Mr. Cure and the comments from the, uh, from the public, as well as the input again from staff, um, this, is, this is always, this is always a, a tough one because, you know, um, from the discussion that Mr. Talowski was bringing up about neighborhood, which I think has a big impact on here, I think there's a lot about this particular house that does suit the neighborhood. Um, and, you know, I think it would be a great looking house. However, I am actually going to put forward a motion uh, to deny this application. I'm going to put forward it on the basis that the cumulative, as, as uh, staff noted, the cumulative effect of all the various variances, some of them which I would probably support individually if that's all they were, but the cumulative impact on this does create a building that is out of proportion. I will rely on, on my, uh, uh, on the town staff to, uh, on their definition of neighborhood as well as their definition of what's out of context. Um, and I'm not gonna talk to the individual items necessarily um, but, uh, but just let it rest on that. So I'm going to put forward a motion that this application be denied in its entirety. Is there a discussion on this recommendation to deny? Mr. Hardcastle? Um, Madam Chair, I'm just going to, um, put my comments in support of, um, Mr. Charlebaugh's, um, motion. Um, I think that the, um, the design of the building uh, is relatively large, although there are a number of buildings of um, similar size in the area. But um, 
Uh, I think the architectural massing does nothing to uh, minimize the uh, additional square footage that's being proposed uh, through the RFA variants. Um, I think uh, the dwelling depth in combination with this, in addition to the design of the building, including the removal, um, the forced removal of uh, significant components of the lot line uh, um, plantings, uh, cumulatively, uh, it's not supportable, it's not consistent with the character of the neighborhood, particularly in the immediate context. I was looking for something to better define the context and provide some clarity to what I had observed on my own site visit, and I didn't hear anything uh, to go beyond what I had observed through my site visit, and, uh, and as such, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna support the uh, motion put forward. Thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Any further discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support to den of the denial of this application? All those opposed? Mr. Talowski is opposed. Mr. Kieran, appreciate your time and the application has been denied. Okay. Thank you. CAVA 148 at 1374 Secord Avenue. Good evening, Good evening. Uh, Madam Chairman, uh, members of the Council, uh, Treasury. My name is uh, Raida Rawi. I'm from Professional Floor Plans, Inc. 5147 Preservation Circle, Mississauga, Ontario, L5M74. I'm the authorized agent and the engineer for the client. Thank you, Mr. Rawi. Um, is there anyone here f for this application, uh, CAV 148 at 1374 Secord Avenue? I see none. Uh, Mr. Rawi, do you have anything further to add in terms of your application? We've uh, done our site visits. We've seen the, the staff's report. Do you have any comments that you'd like to address to the committee before we take this committee, uh, this matter into committee? Yeah, I'm just uh, want to say my client uh, would like to apologize for any inconvenience made. He was not aware that he's uh, violating any bylaw or uh, any zoning uh, deficiency. So uh, he, he relied on the contractor advice and he, uh, he didn't know that. So he would like to apologize for that. That's okay. Thank you for that. Uh, members, do you have any questions of Mr. Rawi at this time? I see none. So if you have nothing further to oh. add, we are ready to proceed yes. uh, to decision on, the, on this application. Members, I will note uh, on record that staff is um, in support of the application and um, they have a condition on, on hand. This is an application for a um, addition to an accessory building. Madam Chair, just one question. Sir. Do you still need to get a building permit? Yes, and we already applied. Okay, thank you. Madam Chair, I'll move the application be approved as applied for, finding that it meets the four tests of the Planning Act. Note that there is no resident opposition. Make the approval conditional on development proceeding, general accordance with the drawings, and that a building permit issue is in two years. Thank you, Mr. Tlaski. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay. Your application has been approved. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on to application CAV 149 at 167 Nelson Street. Good evening, Madam Chairperson. My name is Gus Ricci. I'm with Gus Ricci Architects, and we are the architects and agents for the application before you. We are at 64 Rebecca Street in Oakville. Thank you, Mr. Ricci. Is there anyone here in application CAV 149 uh, at 167 Nelson Street? I see none. Mr. Ricci, is there anything that you'd like to add to your application? Uh, st staff is in support of your application, and they have proposed a condition. Um, if you have nothing further to say to the committee or committee members, do you have any questions of Mr. Ricci at this time? 
I would just like to add that uh, I appreciate the committee's uh, patience on this project. Since this is our third time back on this particular property, and uh, I think they've been rather patient with us. Thank you. Well, it's good to see that uh, we come back and look at the uh, matter before us, and there's always progression, <laughs> as all we hope for. Um, members, if you have no further questions of Mr. Ricci, I'm willing to enter entertain a um, recommendation. Mr. Hardcastle, thank you. Madam Chair, um, having reviewed the materials, um, uh, noting that this is a very eclectic neighborhood with, uh, with uh, a fairly significant transition uh, f uh, across the street from the, that apartment building, um, I would uh, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> lost my train of thought there. Um, uh, it's a pretty eclectic neighborhood, uh, notwithstanding it being fairly substantial uh, RFA uh, variance, uh, given the nature of the neighborhood and some of the architectural detailing on the building, I can support the requested variances. I'll put forward a motion of approval subject to two conditions, the first being that the proposed dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the plans dated June 16th, 2017, the second being uh, the issuance of a building permit within two years, um, uh, otherwise the variance will be null and void. I would note also that uh, there are no residents present um, uh, with respect to this matter. Thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. Um, members, um, all those in support of this application, thank you. Um, Mr. Ricci, your application has been approved. Thank you. Um, CAV 1504445 Caesar uh, Avenue, Caesar Avenue. Good evening, committee members, Madam Chair. I'm Graham Barrett, agent for the owners. I live at 22 Close Avenue, Toronto. Good evening, Mr. Barrett. Uh, is there anyone here for application CAV? 150 at 445 Caesar Avenue. I see none. Um, members, do you have any questions of Mr. Barrett uh, at this time? Mr. Hardcastle uh, has some questions for you, Mr. Barrett. Sure. Um, Mr. Barrett, just uh, for clarity's sake, uh, in looking at the site plan drawing that you've provided here, uh, am I reading it correctly to note that the uh, driveway uh, widens beyond the front face of the house to be two car widths um, in, in width? That does appear to be what it's showing, yes. Uh, in, in, um, because I, I note on the drawing that the, there's not a, it doesn't show the street trees. Um, and if I recall from my, correctly from my site visit, there is a street tree that may conflict with that. So I wanted to get some clarity from my, either yourself or from staff with respect to the consideration of that. Um, that is a good point. I've, I've been to the site once when I put up the sign and I put it on the tree hoarding that was around a small tree out front. Um, although it didn't really register with me at the time that that might be an issue. So I was uh, really only considering the garage and coming here. Um, per perhaps I can then direct that question to staff and, and see if there's any clarity to be offered um, uh, from their perspective. Through you, Madam Chair, to the committee members, um, staff are unaware of any conflict at this particular time. Um, the variances that were presented did not deal with the proposed driveway increase. Um, Therefore, we would defer to the site alteration permit process, which would assess the trees and whether or not that driveway could in fact be widened in accordance with the, the driveway permit process. Are there any uh, further questions of Mr. Barrett? I see none. Mr. Barrett, uh, do you have anything further to add to your um, application? Um, uh, just we so we do know that staff is in support of your application. Yeah, we received uh, staff comments. We appreciate them. There are three additional letters of support that we have um, from two houses immediately across the street and one three doors down on the same side as the subject property. 
I also spoke to the immediate neighbors on the other side where the proposed garage is going to be, and they had no objections. Um, but the owners tried to follow up with them, and they're apparently out of town for a while, so we weren't able to obtain a letter from them. Very well, thank you. We'll uh, take those into record and we'll note them. Um, members, any further questions before we take this matter into committee? If you have nothing to add further, uh, okay, I'm, I'm in your hands, ready for a motion. Madam Chair, um, having visited the site, read the staff report, and uh, listened to the comments, I'm just trying to think of what Mr. Hardcastle uh, was raising here. Um, however, I, I don't believe it does have an impact upon the variances being requested, and uh, I believe that the, the variances uh, are not the best, but they're uh, certainly an improvement on, on what's on an existing condition that's there. Um, having, so having said that, I'm going to put forward a motion that uh, uh, that these variants be approved, finding that they meet the four tests under the Planning Act, making them subject to the condition of the approval to expire within two years from the date of this decision if the building permit is not issued, and further that the condition or the condition here that the proposed garage addition be constructed in general accordance with the plans dated June 29th, 2017, as submitted. Thank you, Mr. Charlebois. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay, your application has been approved, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay, application uh, CAV 13217 Rebecca Street. Uh, this was deferred from July the 25th. Mr. Ricci, hello. Thank you, Madam Chair. Gus Ricci at 64 Rebecca Street, Oakville. Thank you. are the architects and agent. Thank you. Uh, CAV A132, 17 Rebecca Street. Is there anyone here with interest in this application? I see none. Uh, Mr. Ricci, do you have anything further to add? Staff is now in support of your application. Um, if you have nothing further to add, uh, perhaps I'll defer to my colleagues for questioning. Uh, no, I do not have anything further to add. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Are there any questions of Mr. Ricci at this time? Mr. Charlebois. So, Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Ricci, can you throw the site plan up on there again? Just Sure. I was wandering around the building. Just to, I just need to clarify in my mind exactly what's being asked for. Um, there, there's, I'm just going to talk. In, so the, right now there's two units in here, and does the uh, do the unit occupants enter in through those two front doors? One, That's correct. There's yeah. two front doors uh, facing Rebecca Street. Right. So access to the ground floor apartment unit and access to the second floor apartment unit are, are through those two doors. Okay. So the proposal is to uh, remove one of the doors, uh, maintain access to the existing ground floor apartment, and then provide access to the second floor apartment via a new stair leading up to an existing uncovered balcony right. um, that leads into the uh, the apartment on the second floor. And, and that'll be the only access now to the second floor? District. That's correct. Okay. No, you clarified it. Thank you. Are there any further questions of Mr. Ricci at this time? Okay, I see none, so we're now prepared to take this matter into committee. Mr. Talowski, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I believe this is an appropriate reuse of an existing building. Um, the variances are really technical in nature. The second floor variances are really just reflecting the existing first floor and the addition of the staircase just technically changes the definition of an existing situation and I believe the staircase adds uh, very little impact to the situation. I uh, note that there's no opposition from the neighborhood. With that, Madam Chair, I'd move the application be approved as applied for, find that it meets the four tests of the Planning Act, make the approval conditional on development proceeding in general accordance with the drawings provided and that a building permit issue within two years. 
Thank you, Mr. Toski. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay, your application has been approved. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, our, our last application of the evening, uh, CAV 111 for 2315 Millward Avenue. Good evening, Madam Chair and members. Uh, my name is William Hicks with Hicks Design Studios, located in Oakville at 295 Robinson Street, L6J 1G7, Unit 200. Thank you, Mr. Hicks. Is there anyone here for application CAV 111 for 2315 Millward Avenue? I see, we've hit the jackpot. Uh, I am assuming you are in opposition? Yes. We also have several uh, opposition letters um, uh, submitted. Um, Mr. Hicks, will you please uh, kindly uh, go through your presentation and then we'll invite the members of the uh, public to come down and uh, address the committee. Yes, I will, Madam Chair. Uh, just one, for one matter to deal with right up front, I do have copies of some slightly amended drawings which are referred to in the planning report, I believe, and I'll certainly make those available to the Secretary Treasurer so that there are uh, copies of those in the committee's hands. For clarification, I will explain first of all that the only change in these drawings, there are no change to the variances. In consultation with planning and with the uh, engineering department, we moved the garage door from a side entrance to a front entrance. So we took the driveway out of the easement to improve some grading issues and drainage issues and we moved it to the front. But there were no changes in the variances so subject to the committee's decision tonight, the drawings that have been handed out tonight uh, would be the ones that I would want attached to the decision. We have made a point of hand delivering these to the residents in the area to make them aware that there was a change in here, but the variances did not uh, change at all. So. You, you say that you've delivered these uh, drawings. You, dry, you delivered them within the entire uh, well, what we do is we have uh, always, for many years, hand-delivered packages to all the residents that are within the circulated area. In this case, uh, my assistant, who's not with me tonight, uh, did that again last week. I can't answer whether it went to every one of the people within the circulated area. Uh, we believe it did, but I may be mistaken on that. But we tried to make them aware that there was going to be a pending change on it. And really, it was more relevant to the neighbor at uh, 2307 who's here tonight because they were concerned with the location of the garage door being on the side of the building and had some concerns with grading. So that's the only reason for the change. Okay. Notwithstanding that, the, the application remains the same as what the residents were circulated with previously. So. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hicks. Go ahead and uh, continue. I apologize for the interruption. Oh, absolutely. So. So the variances that we're seeking, there's three of them, and for the interest of time, I'm going to talk about one of them more than the other, but I will touch on each of them. Uh, one of them is for a gross floor area of the garage. We've changed from 45 square meters to 47.6 square meters, so a very minor adjustment to it to provide some appropriate storage in the back of the, the garage itself. So The second variance is related to a front yard. This one may seem as if it's a large variance, but in, in discussions with planning and also in considering the uniqueness of this lot, if you look at the site plan that's before you, this property is actually wedged in between some properties that front onto, I've just forgotten the name of the adjacent street, uh, Bilma, and also on uh, Vance Drive on this side. So these properties are all facing this direction. These ones are facing that one. And this property is a remaining parcel in between on Millward. So when we were designing the house, we thought it was important to try and match the setbacks of the adjacent houses, even though those may not be their front doors. You'll see that this house is 4 meters or 4.2 meters from the street line. This house is uh, even less than that, I believe, 3.78 meters. We felt that it was certainly consistent with the official plan to try and match this, the front yard setbacks of the street. And I think planning certainly supported that uh, uh, attempt to uh, uh, make this work within the context of the street itself. It also gave us some additional uh, rear yard setback for the amenity space with the uh, house itself, uh, for the proposed house itself. The existing house is set back some 
uh, 10.56 meters and therefore feels a little bit out of place on the street in my opinion. So. Third variance is for gross floor area. In this case we're seeking a, a variance of about 10% that's allowed 37%. We're seeking 40.45%. We've tried to mitigate any impact of the increased floor area by using some increased setbacks at the first floor or on the second floor where the garage is located where we have actually set back the second floor of the building from the front face and from the side face and I'll just show you on the second floor plan where there's a, a space here where we've set it back from the front face of the garage and from the right side face of the garage we have some flat roof to covered uh, terraces at the back, which again help to mitigate any impact of increased mass on properties to the back of the, of the site. And we've actually employed a method of stepping back the side yard of the house as it moves from front to back to try and increase the side yard setbacks to the houses adjacent to the, the south side. So we are well under the allowable uh, coverage on the site. Um, certainly meet all of the other requirements. I think the unique part of this, this site is that it has a fairly wide frontage compared to others on the site. It narrows to a much narrower rear yard, so it's a wedge-shaped piece of property. And there's a six-meter easement on the side, which is there for drainage issues within the <coughs> residential area. That's the reason we took the driveway out of that uh, application, so that we were free and clear to address and resolve any drainage issues, which appeared to be one of the main concerns of the residents in the area. So, so we're satisfied that we can do that. We've hired Steve Potter at Trafalgar Engineering, who's certainly an expert in this. And uh, we have made a site plan or site alteration permit application already with all the proposed grades suggested. So, so that was one of the reasons for the, the change. I think in terms of considering the gross flurry, if, if one looks at the impact on the street, we have very large side yard setbacks at the front of the house we exceed nine meters at the front corner of the house, whereas the required setbacks other than the, the um, easement would be uh, approximately two or 2.4 meters. So, so the house certainly doesn't have a large impact on the street. And as I say, we've employed a method of uh, reducing the impact by using one story portions of the house around the perimeter of it to uh, mitigate any change or impact on adjacent neighbors. It certainly has no impact from the sun shadowing and uh, privacy perspective. And as I say, from reading the residents' letters, it appears that certainly the ones adjacent to it are more concerned with one particular tree, which you'll hear about, which is right here. The large willow tree, our client would like to preserve that tree. It's fairly important to them. One of the residents is concerned that it's dropping its limbs uh, and it's damage, potential damage to their property. That would be dealt with through the site alteration permit process. We do have an arborist that's addressed that and says that the tree is possible to save. And our client's uh, preference is to actually save it. It's a fairly important tree to him. So the other trees on the streetscape at Millward Avenue are being preserved, uh, what there are of them. And so uh, there's no impact on other adjacent trees in the neighborhood. And I think there are two residents that can speak that live further up uh, Vilma Drive that uh, really, in my opinion, aren't impacted by the application and perhaps are more concerned just generally with seeking any variances of any type in the area. So, so with that, I'll certainly leave it open to questions to the committee and then allow the uh, residents to make their presentations. Thank you, Mr. Hicks. Are there any questions of Mr. Hicks at this time? Mr. Charlebois? I'm going to wait till the public sort of addresses things. I'm, I'm just a little confused on the plans. I mean, the plans you gave us, uh, I note, uh, lost it here again, are dated the uh, 042517, which are the same plans that I have uh, as part of the application. So is, is there a same. chance that I actually did get the, uh, the right plans in my application? Should, it should show a revision number five in the upper right-hand above our name, revised driveway location. Does that show that in your plan? Uh, yeah. You are, yeah, no, you're right. Sorry, this one shows revision three, and now we have revision four and five. Okay. That's right. My apologies. Yeah. So the revision five are the ones that I would certainly want to attach to any decision of this. All right. As and I say, it has not affected any variances of any type. And for the purposes of, of myself and everybody here, um, 
just because we we are seeing these for the first time. Can you actually point out to me on the drawing those revision four and five then? Uh, I guess four probably just a revision to the grading plan probably won't be much, but the revised driveway uh, location and revision five? Yes, I will. I'll show you the the new driveway location, which is really the intent of revision five is right here. So the driveway is coming off of Millward Avenue. Revision four actually referred to the old drawing where we were amending grades within the uh, um, easement area. So they're not applicable at this point in time. So yes, I do have the original drawing here. And the original drawing showed the garage entering from that location. And the driveway basically did this. This portion of the driveway fell within the drainage easement. While we felt that we had a solution for that, uh, transportation and works and certainly planning were, uh, I think, far more supportive of simply moving it to the front of the house, dealing with it as a traditional driveway and allowing that entire area to be restored to its original drainage easement status because it was modified by a previous owner, I understand, not by this owner. And it will be as part of the conditions of this, and I see it's in the conditions of the uh, uh, planning department. Certainly they are prepared to restore that. We think the solution we have for drainage is actually going to vastly improve the drainage in the area, and I know that's been a great concern because of some of the storms. All right, good. That clarifies it. Thank you. Any further questions of Mr. Hicks at this time? I see none. Thank you, Mr. Hicks. We'll invite you to take a seat, and um, Thank you. I'll start taking the uh, concerns of the other um, members in the audience. So, will each of you speak, or is someone collectively speaking up on behalf of the group? No, that's that's just going to be too much. Perhaps I, I'm I'm happy to hear every one of you as long as we're not repeating uh, the comments and the points. So, who would like to go first? Uh, thank Hello. you, Madam Chairperson and Committee. Um, I live at two three zero seven Millward Avenue, right here, at the property adjacent. And um, your I your name and you address for the record. My name is Elaine Pankratz at, two th and I said 2307. Yes, 2307. And Mr. Hicks has been, and the neighbors that are, the applicants have been very uh, cooperative and forthcoming, and we've really appreciated that on all that they've done. I am c confused, and my neighbors are also confused at the drawing of my house. Uh, my house, we feel like we live straight on with the street, and, and the drawing doesn't really seem to accurately reflect my house. It does seem to show, um, that the new property will be flush with mine, but that's not really how my house goes. So I'm, I'm confused by how they've drawn this on the drawing. I didn't say that in my letter because I was referring to other, to the flooding issues and that instead of to this. So I do, I do have that question as to, and um, the concern, you've seen all the other applications had one person show up. You can see that we're a neighborhood and we didn't come together in a car. We came because we're all concerned. We all live there. And the decision that the committee is making is establishing precedent for what is happening in our neighborhood. So the changes are happening. What the changes have been made, ours is a very much of an infill neighborhood right now. The changes that have been made haven't been wonderful. Um, there has been flooding in some of the neighbor's properties. There has been, uh, there isn't the character of the neighborhood that has not been maintained. Um, the, the, Houses are very imposing. There isn't um, any sympathetic transition with what is there and what is what is coming. Uh, this new house and their plan, I'm, you know, they're a nice couple and and have the right to build their dream home. But I would we we're concerned about all the changes in the variances and and what people are asking for and just the overall uh, effect on our neighborhood. We are a neighborhood. That's why we're all here. Um, and the decisions you make are important and they're, they're gonna change. Um, I, the flooding issue and the amount of property covered, right now it's a very small house set back and, and Mr. Hicks says it doesn't fit with the neighborhood, but it does. It fits with the neighborhood that existed until this point when, the, when all the building has been done. And 
now bringing it forward will make such an imposing structure on the street. I understand why they need to do it to go around with the variance, but um, I do hope that everything is done within the bylaws as written and, and that they're written for a purpose. The flooding issue, I lived through the flood on, on, uh, in North Oakville. I wrote it in my letter, which I sent to you. Having lived through the flood with 25 people evacuated into buses with all that comes, if I hadn't married, if I hadn't lived through the flood, if I hadn't married a stormwater management person, I wouldn't know what I know about the importance of having um, a surface, a place so that surface runoff isn't so absolutely incredible. And that right now, surface runoff can go through. It, that can't happen with all the structures. And there's a cumulative effect with every single house that you agree to build and every variance that you agree that can be allowed in this and this and this and this. The cumulative effect of all of them is what causes flooding. And there is no stormwater management plan south of the QEW. That was given by... Yes. Pardon? Uh, there's the name of the, the report that was done as a presentation to. And I referred to it in my letter. I referred to it in my letter. You don't have to. I put, referred to it in my letter. I'm trying to convince you now orally. But if that's not inappropriate, that's fine. Certainly. Certainly. Sorry, I misunderstood. Um, sorry, I'm losing my time now. So just the fact that it's so imposing and out of proportion, and we really are concerned about stormwater management. I don't want to live through another flood. I don't want my property to flood. I don't want my neighbors. And it's not just this house. It's the other houses that are being built all around the neighborhood. So, so if I'm hearing you correctly, you don't necessarily have anything against the variances of maximum floor area as well as residential floor area. Your concern is the effect of this new construction on your stormwater uh, where it weighs. Yes. And the, no, and the imposing structure being brought so much forward. So yes, the variance of how close it becomes to the front of the street. You, you, with the, 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 the front yard setback. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I don't have the terminology like No, no, that's you fine. Do you, no. you all speak I'm very just much trying to, to reiterate what your thoughts were. Okay. Um, um, this is, this is more of a thing to show that even everywhere south of the QEW, there is no stormwater. So it's up to you to abide by town bylaws and things like that to uphold them so that until we do have a stormwater management plan in place, that we cease this constant, constant building every, in every single, and, and every single little person that's asking for a variance, it all adds up to a cumulative effect. And it creates the flooding that we had in Burlington two years ago and the flooding that we had in Oakville in the year 2000 in College Park. Okay. Um, thank um, you. My neighbors might want to speak to Yes, some thank you, Ms. Vengro. Hold on for one second. Um, are there any questions of uh, Ms. Pankratz at this time? No. Okay. Thank, thank you. you for your time. Who is next? Hello, this is getting very late and I'm going to try and keep it as short as possible. My name is uh, Anna Anderson and I live at 247 Vilma Drive. Um, I just wanted to uh, reiterate some of the points that were made, but also I wanted to make a point that uh, the bylaws are made for a purpose, for a reason, and starting to, uh, by, by um, addressing the fact that these houses are asking for variances and they become bigger and bigger and as these variances are given consideration and approval, the next house can be built based on uh, a precedent that was set from the previous house and as we were saying, we live in a neighborhood where there's so much development that's happening. The houses and the homes are getting bigger and honestly the, the infrastructure is not sustainable for the size of these homes that are being built. Um, I ask that these homes, should they be built, uh, be within the uh, bylaws that are, pr uh, that are set um, as, they, as the requirements as they are right now. Very well, thank you. And of are course I support everything else. Are there any questions of Ms. Anderson at this time? Mr. Shalgo has a question for you then. Okay. No, I'm just going to ask you to clarify it in, in terms of the three variances that are here because I, I heard your general comments but um, 
I'm speaking mostly about the one um, uh, variance number two. Number two is where, the uh, size of the house. Yeah, there's yeah. a 37 percent allotment, like that's the bylaw, mm -hmm. com considering the size of the lot. And again, I, th I believe the understanding is, is that you determine how much coverage of the lot is based on the size of the actual that's, lot. That's correct. Now, uh, and again, my question might be, the, um, the, uh, the, the easement, is that part of the lot or is that part of the city's property? And what part of the lot was actually measured in order to give them 37% of it? I mean, and again, that's I'm a bylaw not, thing yeah. and I don't know what the I'm, answer of that not, could be. I'm not positive, but usually the easement would be counted as part of the lot. It's they are, easement, it's so. property for the owner that for can be owner. used for, yeah. which is kind of an oxymoron because that's really not the owner's property, that is the town's property, correct? No, it's the, the owner's variant, property, the, uh, but, the, easement? But, but he can't build on it, so he has a restriction on it, even though okay. it's his, so he can't do whatever he wants. That's okay, so I'm not going to even argue that, yeah. but I'm just kind of pointing that out, I don't know. Yeah. Um, and they're asking for more coverage of that lot as uh, 40.45, and um, I'm no, thinking No, they're, they're not asking for more coverage of the lot, they're asking to build more square footage on the lot, right. but they're actually staying within the coverage that they're permitted. In other words, the footprint that they occupy is fine, but they've got, because they're two stories, they've got more square footage in there than would be permitted based on the math. Mm -hmm. I wish it always came together like that, but it doesn't. Okay. So that one there, what about, I just want to clarify because of the, the front yard, there was an objection from the lady who came up to you before that she felt that the building was pushed too far forward. Do you have an opinion on that or? or I believe that um, depending on, and again, I, we did not see an actual um, visual of what the house is going to look like at the front of the house, right. but again, it's very, it is imposing in the neighborhood because there's all smaller homes, uh, there's two-story homes, but they're not overwhelming, well, some of them are uh, somewhat overwhelmingly imposing, especially uh, the latest one that's being built on Vilma, just having that repeated around the corner and over the whole neighborhood, it makes it, um, it shakes the character away from the, from, from the area. Okay. Um, again, I'm not sure what kind of home, is it going to be one of these modern homes that are boxes? Is it going to be a home that's going to be more of a Cape Cod type style home? Um, having it so close to the, 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 the road, it is going to be imposing it onto the neighborhood. So I get received Mr. Hicks's package that had I did, the elevations. I did, I got it. I got it, but the house, the actual so the first view of the house. Oh, yeah, is which is. The first one is the Yeah, yeah. it's not even, uh, it's, it's, it doesn't really match the character of the neighborhood, which is more of a Cape Cod type neighborhood. This one seems to be very square. I mean, I'm not going to argue the design of it, but just by looking at this box, it, it, it's going to feel like it's very close to the road and it's not okay. um, designed to match the rest of the homes that are in the neighborhood. Fair enough, thank right, you. Thank you. Are there any other further questions? Okay. All right, is there anyone else who'd like to address the committee? Hi, I'm Lynn Earl at 266 Vans. 266. And um, my concern- Sorry, we didn't get your last name, Lynn. Earl, E-A-R-L-E. E-A-R-L-E. And you're at 266. Yeah, I'm just north of uh, the next door neighbor, um, one up. Uh, for us, um, we have a lot of privacy, so the size, I, I'm, as far as seeing the house for us, it wouldn't be a big issue, but f my concern is how close it is to the road, the 5.2 five meter, five meters compared to the 10.52, is it, or whatever, yeah. uh, approximately. And I understand, like uh, Mr. Hicks said about the the tree, you know, preserving the tree. We, the one reason we moved in the neighborhood 25 years ago is because of the trees. We, the area is just beautiful. And uh, the previous owner, which wasn't uh, at the fault of this owner, uh, took down approximately five big, huge, mature trees. And then the one standing, and I don't know if anybody knows a lot about willow trees, but that's the one standing, and it's like 100 foot tall. And, and as anybody knows anything about willow trees, their, their roots are ground, they're not deep, they're at uh, ground level. So my, our concern, because several bran big branches have fallen off that tree, you know, since we've lived in the residence, um, with building such a big house and disturbing the root system, because it's already been in the foundation of the previous house, it's already standing there several times, or at least three I know of, and I've heard it's been in there more, in the foundation and the water system, 
And um, that's a main concern. And uh, with disturbing the root system, it's, all, it's, it's a danger to the new, the new owners. And, and I know he has a beautiful family and children and everything. And also the surrounding neighborhood, uh, like the houses that are around that, it's a huge tree. And, uh, and it's very top heavy. And it's probably at the maximum size it's ever gonna grow. Maybe if, you know, maybe 10 feet more, I don't know. But uh, it's overgrown, and uh, like Mr. Hicks said, it would be pruned and everything. But it's, it's just that it's so top-heavy that there's nothing on the bottom. And with the, tr you know, the root system on a tree like that. Anyways, uh, that's, I understand why they're bringing the house forward, probably to preserve the tree, which is great. And we're all pre you know, preserving uh, trees. But it's the unfortunate thing, the previous owner took down five beautiful trees huge trees that took away um, my neighbor's privacy totally. So now she's totally open to this big, huge house with no privacy in her yard, in her house. And like the previous lady before me, um, in keeping with the neighborhood, the houses are, you know, one story. On either side is more or less one, uh, two stories, but they're the one smaller, you know, the old brownie style, half, yeah. you know, homes. And, uh, and that's mostly my concern. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they were good enough to, the, the driveway was taken off the side to the front, you know, so there's not that noise and, and the, the water issues and the, everything else with the uh, easement and the drainage and everything else, but still a big concern because as, and going back to, I hate to dwell on the tree, but <laughs> it is a, it is a water sucking tree, right? And yeah. you're taking away, you know, with building such a big property, you know, you know, it's just, uh, it's, it's a setback and the size of the house. And, uh, and I just was wondering also, the previous owner, um, because of the sale of the house, they were supposed to plant three trees. You know, when they would take trees down, they're supposed to replant trees and not, nothing was ever replanted. But I understand that it goes with the, when it goes to the new owner, the, the, the deposit that the previous owner put down, it, it goes or whatever, but it's still a big open spot, especially for my neighbor, for privacy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that, that's, that's, yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you, okay. Ms. Earl. Is there any questions right now, Ms. Earl? I just wondered, did you get a chance to speak with Mr. Hicks at all when the drawings were being circulated as to whether he was going to, whether there was any thought about planting trees or no, the No, uh, no, I, I didn't, but Mr. Hicks and oh. his client have been very kind, like, like you said, they hand delivered, uh, you know, the specs of the house and everything, but I did talk to the owner about the tree because I was concerned, you know, because he's got young children too, and they're just, it's a swamp tree, literally, and, and, and with the, you know, with the, 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 I understand he wants to bring it back and keep, you know, maybe have a bigger backyard, that, you know, but um, I just don't think being that close to the road is in the character with the neighborhood, and it's, it's already a bad situation for my neighbor with no trees that were taken down. They were big trees that were taken down, and uh, she even lost trees on her chestnut tree because of when they took the old trees down, you know, and uh, in her yard. So it's just, um, you know. <laughs> Understood. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else uh, that would like to speak to the committee at this time? Okay. I see none. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hicks, you have your time now to answer all these concerns. Thank you, I will be as brief as possible. So as from what I've heard and certainly from the letters, it's consistent. There seems to be three concerns. One was grading, one is front yard setback, and one is growth floor area. So I don't think anyone's concerned with the parking garage, so we can put that one aside for the size of the garage. With respect to grading, I can assure the neighbors that uh, their town's engineering department is probably one of the most diligent I've ever worked with in my 35 years of doing this. We will not be permitted to increase the post-development flows on this, on this property. In fact, we are going to have to make sure that they are totally controlled on this property and that we improve the drainage issues that were caused by the previous owner infilling part of the easement. So, so certainly I can assure the residents and the neighbors that that is of concern to my client as well. He does not want to be flooded out of his own new house. So I think that that is a fairly easy one to resolve and it's really the reason for two things. Number one way we've pushed the house forwards and we've not gone into that easement. The town originally had said they were prepared to 
allow some encroachment into that easement, and we've come back and withdrawn that request. To, um, with respect to the uh, drainage issue as well, I wanted to point out what I made in my presentation is that the coverage is actually less than what's permitted in the zoning. It's the coverage that increases the post-development drainage runoffs more so than whether there's a flat roof. In fact, some of this does have a flat roof. We can actually control the drainage from the roof by having stormwater drainage control on the roof itself. So, so I think I can deal with that. In terms of the front yard setback, yes, uh, certainly my direction from my client was to move forward and preserve that tree. We have had an arborist look at that tree. He says, notwithstanding some of the comments that you've heard, it is an important tree and it should be preserved and it can be preserved. So, so I think that's certainly the intent of this and certainly moving it forward also reflects the fact that it's a fairly shallow property and to build the house and move it back on the lot would really give them no privacy in terms of their own rear yard setback. And I think certainly in terms of dealing with the infill and urban design guidelines with the town and the official plan, I've been before the board many, many times, and I've discussed these with Kate many, many times. I think what we're suggesting is, in fact, totally compliant with the official plan, and if we moved it back, it would actually be out of compliance with the official plan. So, so that is another reason for it. We think that the mitigating factors of uh, reducing the mass at the front of the house, increasing the side yard setbacks, adding some two-story elements that are set back in from the face of the house, house help house actually help to uh, deal with any concerns in terms of the uh, impact on the street and uh, thus uh, we, f we feel quite strongly that the setback is the appropriate setback and maybe perhaps the smaller house that was on the site might seem appropriate given its location on the current property but uh, it would not comply or be compatible with the intent to try and match and average out the side yard setbacks or the front setbacks that you see for adjacent houses, some of which we've discussed here in other applications, I know certainly tonight. So, so with that, uh, Madam Chair, I'm uh, open to any further discussions. We believe that it certainly meets the four tests. I have seen the um, conditions that were uh, provided by the planning department. We are in agreement with that. We know that one of them recommends that we have to restore the drainage easement. And with respect to the question of the trees, this client will be undertaking a fairly uh, detailed landscaping plan. And if there was a previous agreement to replant five trees, I will make sure he follows that agreement so, as part of our plan. So, and I'm sure that will be brought up certainly in our discussions with Vince Blosser in the uh, engineering department. He's made reference to that a number of times. Madam Chair, uh, any further questions? Are there any questions of Mr. Hicks at this time? Um, Mr. Hicks, just, just to clarify again for, for everybody, because we, we've been talking about the lot coverage being less, and I, yes. I just want to confirm in here. If I look at your drawings, the permitted lot coverage is 35%, and you're building to 28, is that correct? That's correct. So, so there's a, a substantial difference. And I, I guess just to, to clarify matters, not that I'm trying to make a point here, but to clarify it, the lot coverage relates to how much building is actually sitting on, on the lot. I call it the footprint. And so the applicants permit to build quite a bit more. You can actually expand another 6%, which in this particular lot would be a lot. Um, in other words, make his building wider and longer uh, if he wanted to. Probably and, another and 600 square feet, actually, on the yeah. main floor. So, yeah. and, and that's what has the most impact on... on uh, um, on drainage and, and the amount of land that's left over to accept rainwater. Mr. Hicks, you mentioned there's a previous agreement to restore trees. You had that discussion with someone in town in town's engineering or town Vince staff? Blosser has mentioned it. My client has mentioned it. Certainly the residents have mentioned it as well. If that's a condition that was imposed at some point in time, we have no objection to planting new trees. So. Okay, thank you for Where those are planted relative to the grading plan is something we have to review with the grading and engineering department. So. Very well, thank you very much. Are there any further questions of Mr. Hicks? I see none. Mr. Hicks, if you have nothing further to add, we can take this matter into committee. Nothing further. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Members. Gentlemen, who would like to uh, proceed with a motion with respect to this application?
Mr. Charlebois, thank you. Oh, sorry, were you reaching? Yeah. Oh. Oh, is it Mr. Alcastle now? Or? I can defer. Um, Madam Chairperson, having having visited the site and, and read the, the staff report and, and most importantly listened to all of the comments here, um, I'm going to look at, at these variances one by one. Uh, the first one was a, a variance with respect to a private garage uh, expansion of 45 square meters to 47.6. And although that does have an impact, obviously, because the garage gets bigger. It's a one-story uh, garage, so it does put more building on, on the lot. Um, however, th this particular variance was not raised uh, as much of an objection, and to be honest, it, it's fairly typical for this committee to, to agree to something like this, uh, as long as the perception is that the garage is still a two-car two garage. So I find no fault with that one. Uh, the second variance with respect to the residential floor area, um, I'm just going to come back to that one. The third one is with respect to the minimum front yard, which is, seems to be a fairly hotly contested issue. And I guess I have to make the, the point that when I went there, I kind of felt the same way that, that, that the building was being pushed um, and the size of a building being pushed quite far to the front. Um, however, when I look at this, I, I also look at it from the point of point of view of the other points that are in here. One is the protection of the tree, which seemed to be uh, the willow tree, which seemed to be a big issue, and quite frankly, it's one of the biggest looking willow trees I've ever seen. Uh, as well as protection of the easement uh, and keeping the building outside of that easement, which I think addresses a lot of the uh, the drainage issues that are there. And although the you know, one could argue that the front yard setback has got some limitations. When I view it in connection with everything else, I think it, it is uh, uh, that the town and, and the applicant have worked well to create this. And I look at this frontage, irrespective of how big the building is, my feeling is that if the, the building was less in size, we would still want to position it uh, there as the most appropriate thing for this lot. And so the, the last one came down to uh, the maximum residential floor area um, and this is the one that, that uh, I had the most difficulty with in terms of, of uh, this particular neighborhood. Um, and however, I'm going to support this particular uh, uh, variance number two. One, because the town is, is quite supportive of it in terms of the design and whatever. The rest of it is because there are a lot of other mitigating factors with respect to side yards. The fact that the lot coverage on here is quite small. Uh, and I will note that, that, uh, that the applicant is going nowhere near creating the size of a footprint that he could create on this particular lot. So on that basis, I'm going to put forward a motion that all three of these variances be approved, finding that they meet the four tests on the Planning Act, making them condition uh, subject to the condition that the approval will expire two years from the date of this decision. The proposed development does not proceed or a building permit is not issued. And um, further to the condition, the two other conditions in here that, that the proposed dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the revised plans as submitted and that the applicant reinstate the existing town drainage easement to the satisfaction of the Director of Engineering and Construction Services. Um, I won't make this a condition, but I will also note that, uh, that the applicant did note that there was a requirement to plant further trees based on some prior agreement that he would do that. Thank you for uh, your recommendation. Uh, is there a discussion on this uh, recommendation? None. I was actually going to suggest a, a, um, a friendly amendment to actually put the restoration of those trees as a condition, but it's really up to you. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, any further discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay. The application has been approved. Thank you, Mr. Hicks.
Gentlemen, uh, we have uh, minutes to confirm. Okay, gentlemen, we have a minute to confirm for July the 25th. Madam Chair, I'll put forward a motion that those minutes be approved as written. Thank you, Mr. Charleba. All those in support? Very well, the minutes have been approved. Um, time to, for adjournment. And I'll put forward a motion to adjourn. Mr. Charleba puts forth a motion to adjourn at 9.10. Okay. <laughs> All those in support? Very well. Motion to adjourn.